Hello everyone, I'm David Darst with you today to recap the second quarter and also the first half of 2022. As you know, it was a very difficult time, a period for risk assets. You had the, uh, the famous FANG stocks. This is uh, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. For the first half of the year, they were down 41% altogether. Uh, NASDAQ, which can, includes many of the high-tech companies um, uh, just mentioned, as well as a whole slew of others, down 30% for the first half. The S&P 500, uh, in price terms, was down 20.6% for the first half. That makes it the fourth worst first half in uh, stock market history. And the last time it was down this badly was in 1970, uh, when it was down 21%. So very close to 1970's performance. I would add uh, that in 1970, in the second half of the year, the market went up 27%. As we uh, ended the second, uh, the second quarter and the first half of the year, you had the following yields. High yield bonds were yielding uh, in U.S. dollars, 8.89%. The uh, investment grade bonds were yielding 4.85%. The 30-year bonds, uh, U.S. Treasury were yield 3.2%. The 10-year uh, bond, 3.09%. And the 2-year uh, bond, 3.01%. Uh, so you see uh, interest rates have risen. Uh, and uh, that difference between, we've talked about this before, the difference between the 10-year and the two-year is getting very close, and it has briefly inverted a couple of times already. We'll see uh, more about uh, whether that's predicting uh, a recession. Many people, we believe we are in a recession already. The first quarter was down 1.6%. It was originally reported at negative 1.5%. Recently, uh, the Department of Commerce lowered that to mega 1.6 percent, and the Atlanta Federal Reserve, which has this GDP now forecasting tool, uh, is forecasting currently that the uh, uh, GDP of the United States in the second quarter was down 2.1 percent. That gets revised as new economic data come in, but it is a pretty good forecasting tool. Now, the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, in the uh, latter part of uh, May, uh, April and May, uh, reduced their global forecast. Uh, and now they're looking, uh, as you know, t for 2021, the global GDP, you had this big recovery from the pandemic, was up 2.1%. Uh, they have now reduced, uh, they were up uh, over 4%. They're looking for 3.6% in 2022 and 3.6% uh, in 2023. Now, that's globally. Uh, the United States, uh, right now, you're seeing forecasts for GDP uh, anywhere from the 2 to 3 percent range right now. Inflation, on the other hand, uh, the IMF and others, they're looking at the uh, consumer price index was up 8.6 percent. Uh, for the month of May, as you know, you'll get the next number for June will come out on July 13th. So be on the lookout for that. And look, as you know, why is inflation up so high? Number one, infl uh, money supply growth. OK, number two, uh, demand has been very high. The, the big payments, the transfer payments that were made during the pandemic to people, they began to buy goods and and services uh, and uh, you had you had supply constraints, you had bottlenecks, you had shipping delays, okay, you had low inventories. All of these things, you had an excess of demand versus supply. Now, the Fed uh, cannot influence supply, so they're going to try to bring inflation down by influencing demand. They're going to try to do that without harming the labor market too much. 3.6% unemployment still a lot of uh, unfilled jobs as you know there are twice as many unfilled jobs about 11 million as there are uh, unemployed people looking for jobs that's about 5 million let's step back for a quick second and look that uh, 
prices have come down. Prices are much cheaper now. Valuations have come down. You have a P.E. ratio for the S&P 500 of something in the neighborhood of uh, 22, 23 times earnings. It got down to 17 times uh, next year's earnings. Uh, maybe even below that, 16 times earnings. So prices are down. That's one of the big positives. Secondly, the jobs numbers, uh, 360,000 jobs uh, in the month of June. Uh, it's been, the jobs growth has been pretty strong in each of the last several months of the quarter. Um, you have the housing market is pretty strong. Uh, now, you could, with interest rates going up and mortgage rates going up, uh, you could see some problems beginning to develop in the housing market. Uh, the balance sheets of the banks, the balance sheets of corporations are in pretty good shapes and pretty good shape and uh, credit spreads are not really uh, too high. They're open, they're up, but they're not too high. So those are the positives. What are the negatives? Number one, the Fed is tightening into a recession. So I, we think we're in a recession and the Fed is tightening monetary policy into a recession. Uh, you have uh, consumer confidence uh, is quite low. It's, it's at 50 year lows for the Consumer Sentiment Index and for the consumer, Conference Board Consumer Confidence Index. So that's a, another negative, uh, the outlook. You have um, corporate confidence, business confidence, uh, also the National Association of uh, National Federation of Independent Businesses. Their business surveys has had very, very low readings lately. Now, this would then, in my opinion, in our opinion at the family office, uh, Petiol Asset Management, we are of the belief that uh, earnings estimates for the third quarter and the fourth quarter are too high. You're going to get starting July 15th, Friday, July 15th, will be the beginning of the earnings reporting season for many of the big banks. Then you get into the industrial companies and it follows all the way out through the 500 S&P 500 companies, as well as smaller and mid cap companies. Uh, but that the earnings season for the second quarter, and it, it should be uh, something like uh, four to 8%, I don't know, the first quarter was, uh, much higher than that, but the second quarter uh, will be, we'll hear what are the earnings results. You're beginning to get, analysts are beginning to lower the earnings estimates and companies are beginning to give somewhat negative forward guidance. You had this come up with RH, which used to be restoration hardware. You had this come up with Micron Technology. Both of them have begun to lower their guidance. RH, Restoration Hardware, which is a big uh, retailer of furniture and household furnishings, okay? They said that demand had dropped off a cliff, and this was the second time in a couple of weeks that they had come through with this uh, report of uh, a fall off in demand. Recessions generally last, uh, the last 10 or 11 recessions have averaged about 528 calendar days and the bear market period has averaged about 207 days. These are averages. Uh, you could have higher, you could have lower. Um, in the bull phase, in the recovery phase, the recovery usually lasts 563 days. That's well over a year. Those are calendar days. Stock market recovery usually lasts three years, a thousand days or more. Uh, private markets tend to uh, outperform uh, during major slowdowns. So we are of the belief that we're probably 60% of the way through in terms of timing. Okay, how long is this uh, bear market going to last? Uh, and about 60% of the way through in terms of price decline. So you could see another, you could possibly see another 10 to 15% depending on inflation, depending on earnings, and depending on monetary tightening. What I would like to say is right here, we are overweight cash. We're overweight cash, we are neutral in credit, and we'll be underweight in equities. We will tell you when we think it's time to go underweight cash, to go uh, overweight credit, and to go overweight equities. The three keys, let's wrap up. What are the three keys for us to sit here and tell you that we are uh, we're finished 
with the uh, sell-off. We're finished with the bear market. Number one would be a peak in inflation, a peak in monetary tightening. Those are connected to each other. Number two would be uh, a more opening uh, situation in China that seems to be beginning to take place as they've reduced the length of the quarantine uh, by 50 percent from uh, two weeks to one week now. Uh, and they're beginning to open up some of the major cities. And lastly, uh, some uh, further resolution. And this will affect the inflation numbers, of course, because oil and grain and many other things have been dislocated by the conflict, uh, the Russia-Ukraine conflict. And that's the third element that we would want. If we see this one begin to show some signs of resolution, peace talks, truce, ceasefire, that would be the final uh, thing that would let us uh, tell you that, that we're basically starting a new sustainable bull market. Thank you very much for dialing in and being with us today, and we look forward to speaking with you soon.